Middleburg Church of God everywhere you go. But more importantly than that, you represent the kingdom of God everywhere you go. As we talked this morning about living life of excellence. Why? Because the one that we represent is excellent. He is powerful. He is holy. So I don't want to go out there with an unholy representation of a holy God. Amen. I don't want anybody to get any wrong ideas about who God is and what God expects when they see me living a lackadacious, unholy life. Because if they're saying, I don't ever want this statement to be said. If that's a Christian, I don't want nothing to do with it. No, I want it to be like Nathan said. I, I want whatever they got. I want, I want some of that. Can I get a double portion of that, please? And that's, that's a desire. Amen. We're going to look this evening, uh, titled tonight's message, A Final Plea. A Final Plea for the Word. Psalms 119, stanza 22, the final stanza. Uh, we've uh, been through this. We, we started on Sunday night, moved it to Wednesday night, and we're, I wanted to finish it up before, felt like the Lord would have me to finish it up before youth camp. I was going to just finish it up next Wednesday night, but just kind of felt an urgency this, to, to share this this evening and, and to close out this study on Psalms 119. So we're going to look, we're going to pick up at verse 169, and, and those that have not been able to be a part of each of the other 21 stanzas, each message really stands alone by itself. They kind of tie, they tie in to one another throughout the psalm. Psalms 119, it's all about the Word of God. And each stanza has different thoughts, and we've talked about each one of those. So tonight, it, you're not going to be in the dark because, well, I, I missed some of the other ones, or I missed all of the other ones. It, it's going to be a message that stands on its own. It's going to be a message that speaks to you. But we do have Spreaker, so you can go back to Spreaker, and you should be able to pick up the other 21 stanzas if you would like to as well. And that's why we have that. That's why we pay an annual fee for it. If you're not able to be here, Sister Linda sent me a text today, and she, they're listening to us in Indiana. So thank God that they're having a good trip, and they're traveling, and they're fixing to go and see family, but they were able to listen to us on Spreaker, listen to the testimonies over the last two weeks and the message this morning. So thank God for that. So if you're ever not here or you want to catch up or for some reason you want to hear it again, uh, you can go back to Spreaker and listen to them. They're archived there, and it's not just live when we preach it, but it's also there archived. But verse 169, the night of Psalms 119, Psalmist says, Let my cry come near before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. Let my supplication come before thee. Deliver me according to thy, you guessed it, thy word. My lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. Let Excuse me, let thine hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. I have longed for thy salvation, O Lord, and thy law is my delight. Let my soul live, and it shall praise thee, and let thy judgments help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. Father, we love you tonight. We just yield ourselves to you this evening and pray, Lord, that you would touch us, anoint me to preach, and anoint each one to receive the word of God with gladness. It will find good place in our hearts this evening. I pray, God, that we'll leave here forever changed by the gospel, and we'll be careful to praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated tonight. A final plea of the word. Here we are, this 22nd stanza, when I started preaching on Psalms 119 and started with verse 1, some may have been, oh boy. This is going to take a while. But as I've said many times throughout this study, just be thankful that I didn't preach it all in one night. But we're looking uh, here at this final stanza. Believe it or not, we're here. Uh, the 169th verse of Psalms 119, uh, meaning that we've made our way through Psalms 119 uh, that is all about the Word of God. Uh, so as we come to the close uh, of this psalm, for me it's kind of bittersweet because I sure have enjoyed preaching Psalms 119. Never before have I done this in my ministry never before have I've gone through Psalms 119 and preached uh, Psalms 119 but it's been a joy uh, to do it because it's all about the word and if we've ever needed the word before we sure need it today uh, we need the word of God uh, so it's been a lengthy study it's been a lengthy uh, uh, time in this uh, psalm uh, but it, very, 
every part of it speaks to us, and it's been a very rewarding study for me in preparing it, and I pray that it's been rewarding for you to receive it. Uh, and rewarding in the as- essence of this, uh, that the Word of God, how the Word of God uh, affects the life of you and me as Christians, uh, how the Word of God is important to our daily walk, uh, how the Word of God uh, applies to our everyday setting, the importance uh, of the Word of God in our life. Uh, it's so important that the psalmist said in another place that that word uh, that we're preaching about, he said, I've hid it in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Uh, so it's, as we've said uh, throughout this psalm, it's not just a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway, uh, but it's also a light that shines within our hearts and within our souls. Uh, so tonight we're going to look at uh, the psalmist's final plea. And this final plea uh, is once again, concerning the Word. Uh, He's talking about the Word throughout the entire psalm, uh, and and tonight he just gives his final plea. And in his final eight verses, or his 22nd stanza of Psalm 119, uh, he leaves us with four thoughts uh, that we can ponder, that we can consider. And I want us to consider these thoughts tonight uh, as we go through them one by one. Four thoughts for us to hold into consideration uh, as we leave to go out into our our work week or whatever you'll be doing Uh, uh, this week, those of us that will be at camp, some thoughts that we can uh, ponder from the psalmist. The first thing uh, is he lets us know that there's a petition made. Uh, He begins to pray a prayer of enlightenment in verse 169. Uh, He says this, Let my cry come near before thee, O Lord. Uh, Give me understanding uh, according to thy word. He's saying here, uh, Let my cry come before thee, uh, O Lord. What he's saying here uh, is this is speaking of a relationship that is uh, unique within the realm of worship, uh, that we put everything else out of the way uh, and we come into uh, the place of worship. We come into a place of praise. Uh, I recommend that when you pray that you begin it with praise uh, and honor and admiration. Why? Uh, Because the Word of God said He inhabits uh, the praises of His people. Uh, So I want to get God's attention. I want Him uh, to be there in my midst. So uh, I begin to praise Him. So it's talking about this uh, unique cry to God. Uh, We have a God who is accessible to us. Aren't you thankful for that tonight? I don't carry my God. He carries me. That He is accessible to us. That we can call upon Him and He answers. And the wonderful thing about uh, our God is that He chose us. Remember what we've talked about uh, in our, our series in First Peter, that He handpicked us, that we've been chosen uh, by God. Uh, and in this choosing of us, He's also made a choice uh, to provide a link between us. Uh, God has provided a link between uh, us. We have a link with the Heavenly Father. Uh, anybody know who that link is tonight? Uh, he's not the missing link in the child of God's life, uh, but we have an advocate with the Father, uh, and His name is Jesus Christ. Uh, And I pray that Jesus Christ is not the missing link in your life tonight. Uh, I pray tonight that you're in communion uh, with the Heavenly Father through His Son, uh, because we have access to uh, the Father through the Son. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 and 16 uh, tells us that we have not a high priest uh, which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities uh, but what is in all points tempted uh, like as we are yet without sin. Uh, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace uh, that we may obtain mercy uh, and find grace uh, to help in time of need. Anybody ever have any times of need? We can come boldly uh, to the throne room of grace uh, because of the access that has been given to us by the Father. Uh, I shared it with you this morning. He loved us so much uh, that He gave us His Son to give us access. So what is it that the psalmist is asking God? He's got God's attention. He's got the audience of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. He's standing there uh, and has the attention of God. What is it that he asks? First of all, he asks that he would listen to his petition. It's me again, Lord. Never been there. I've got another problem I can't solve. And I can't think of anybody better to go to than the one who created the universe. 
the one who created heaven and the earth that just spoke it all into existence. So first of all, he asked God, listen to his petition. Uh, next thing he says uh, is that he would ask him this question, uh, grant understanding according to thy word. Uh, now, knowledge is very important. It's very important. It's important that kids stay in school. It's important that we get that, that knowledge, and if you can, and, and, and go to college and get a degree, all of that is important. It's important to have knowledge. It's important to learn new things. Uh, scripture tells us to study to show ourselves approved. So it's important to have a knowledge uh, and an understanding uh, of the historical aspects of the Word of God. All of these things uh, are important, uh, but oh, how we need understanding. Knowledge is important, church, but we need some understanding. He's saying, give me understanding. Uh, not just an understanding of how things work, uh, but he said, I want an understanding according to the Word of God. What is he saying here? Uh, I want to learn how to look at things through the Word of God. Uh, I want to learn how to begin to uh, make decisions in my life uh, in alignment uh, with the Word of God. Uh, I want to keep the blueprint in my hand. I want to keep the Word of God close by uh, because I want to have an understanding of how to align things, not to just have a knowledge of the Word, not just to be able to say, uh, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, whosoever believeth Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, not to be able to say, Romans 12 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, uh, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, uh, except the one to the Lord, which shall reasonable service. Uh, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed uh, by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good uh, and acceptable and perfect will of God. Uh, what is that? That's memorization. That's knowledge. Uh, that's an ability to take uh, and, and give uh, and to quote scripture. Uh, but you know what that gives you without understanding? It just gives you a basic knowledge. Uh, you just know what it says. You've just memorized it. Uh, you just know that it is there. Uh, but understanding uh, what is there. Uh, I think about when Philip comes up to the eunuch and he's reading in the word of God and he's reading it and Philip asks him this question do you understand what you're reading? Oh how can I understand unless somebody explains it to me? So he began to explain it to him and as he began to explain it to him I just look at it this way I don't know if it was a ditch a puddle it may have been a body of water but he said there's water what prevents me from being baptized he didn't just get a knowledge of the word of God but he got an understanding that I need to be baptized. I need to have my sins washed away. So a knowledge is important, but an understanding is what we really need. An ability to separate mentality, to, to discern. There, there's a difference between having a, a mental capacity or a knowledge of the Word of God and then there's a whole different story to have a discernment in accordance and understanding of God's Word. So that's what he's asking for. He is saying here this understanding is according to your word, God. That's what I want. Which means to be able to discern things in light of what God's word has said. And not just to discern it and understand it, but to apply them to any given situation. Everything. I've often put it this way. is how It's all about perspective. It's how we look at it. We can look at it through our eyes and see nothing wrong with it. But when we look at it through the lens of God's Word, all of a sudden we see, whoa, the dangers that are there. So he's saying, I need an understanding because there's pitfalls. Uh, there's pitfalls. That's understanding. That's what he's, he's asking for. When he got the audience of God, he didn't ask for a, a new chariot. He didn't ask for a new sword. He asked for understanding. What are we asking God for when we get into His audience? When, when we feel the presence of the Lord, we say, man, this would be a good time to ask for that promotion. It's be a good time. I saw a, a picture this week. It had an armored truck in front of them and said, Lord, I need you to open one more door. And so that, that's the way we are sometimes. Uh, but the, the psalmist did not pray that way. Uh, he said, I could have anything. Uh, I have access to the one who created the heavens and the earth. Uh, when he could ask God for anything, kind of reminds me of Solomon. Uh, when he could ask him for anything, uh, he said, Lord, give me wisdom and understanding how to lead your people. Uh, and that's the, the lead that the psalmist gives here. Uh, what are we asking God when we get into his presence? Uh, Lord, I want an understanding according to your word should be the plea. And then... 
He prays a prayer of enablement in verse 170. He says, let my supplication come before thee. Deliver me according to thy word. Let my supplication come before me. So here he is, the psalmist is asking God once again to rescue him. That's all right. We need to do the same thing. I would rather cry out to God again, rescue me, than to sink in despair. I would rather say, God, I messed it up again. I need you to fix it. I I need you to come to to my rescue. And and he will do that. So here he is once again saying, God, rescue me. He had asked God to deliver him. And he had asked God to give him understanding uh, of why that that had not happened. Uh, He needed deliverance from difficulties. uh, But he also needed deliverance from doubt. Uh, There was three possibilities for why deliverance had not come. Uh, First of all, there was something wrong with God's promises. You think that could have been it? That's not possible. His promises are yea and yea, nay and nay, yes and amen. So that we cancel that one out. There's nothing wrong with God's promises, so that wasn't possible. B, it could have been that there was something wrong with the psalmist's behavior. He was being chastised. Now, that could be possible. I don't know the psalmist didn't know the guy, but I know that I'm apt to be there. There's something wrong with my behavior and therefore, I've got to be chastised. That could have been it. See, there was something wrong with his prayers. Maybe uh, there was not getting through. Psalm 66 and 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And so that could have been the case. Uh, or he was asking God to enable him to understand what was happening. Uh, it could have been that he needed God to show him what was happening. Do you ever wonder why God hasn't answered your prayers? You ever ask that, wonder that? Why hasn't God answered me? Do you ever doubt that He's even going to answer your prayers? We begin to doubt. Psalms 139, verse 23, I told you this this morning, uh, as you approach the altar, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts is that plea of the psalmist. Uh, So we have to come before God uh, and understand that as we're making that plea, uh, a prayer of enablement, uh, understanding uh, and enablement, saying to God, rescue me. I need you uh, to deliver me. I need your answer. Uh, And then uh, we come to this. He had some, he had some, uh, not only was he approaching God uh, and coming before God uh, and and asking him uh, and making his petitions before God, uh, but he also so uh, had praises that he was promising God. Verse 171, he says, My lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. He had learned God's statutes. Where do we learn God's statutes from? Others. He learned it from other people. Scripture talks about that. We've kind of gotten away from it, but Scripture speaks a lot of it. Uh, Paul in his writings to Timothy is sharing a lot of that, that the older are to disciple and to lead uh, the younger, to be an example to them. Uh, I'm I'm afraid that many of our young people's had some poor examples uh, over the years because uh, we've spent too much time struggling with our faith and uh, too much time doubting God and too much time uh, wondering if we're in or wondering if we're out uh, and not getting a established and not getting rooted, uh, but there's a generation uh, that's going to be lost uh, if we're not rooted and grounded. And the psalmist says here, uh, I've learned God's statutes. How did he learn them? From others. Uh, If others uh, are learning God's statutes through you, don't you want to be established in the Word? If you're going to be, uh, Scripture tells us to make disciples of all men. uh, So if we're making disciples of all men, uh, I want to point them to the Word, not my resume. I want them to point them to the Word, not necessarily my highlight reel or even my faults and my failures. We can learn from those things, uh, but he learned God's statutes from others. Uh, that's where uh, we most of us start. That's where we began. Uh, we're taught, uh, perhaps as children in children's church, uh, some of us may have even come later in, in life, uh, but we've learned it from other Christians, uh, those that we've called seasoned Christians, those uh, that we've called uh, elders within the church. And we've learned some basic passages of Scripture, uh, and we were instructed in the Word of God. We've been taught... Uh, 
to, to lean to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Uh, trust in the Lord with all of our heart. There, there's just certain scriptures uh, that we've learned to cling to, that we've heard, learned to take hold of. Uh, but the best uh, lessons are taught by the Lord Himself. We can come and get a knowledge of the Word. We can come what I call a second-hand gospel. Meaning, uh, what, really what happens when you come in here Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, when you come to Sunday school, uh, you're getting the second-hand gospel. What does that mean, Pastor? Uh, that means that you're having somebody tell you about the gospel. That's important in our Christian walk. That is very important. That's how we learn, uh, and that's how we grow. Uh, but I don't want my Christian walk to always be a second-hand gospel. I don't want it just to be something that was preached to me on Sunday morning. I, I don't want church just to be a place that I go three times a week uh, that I hear about God, uh, that, that, I, that I hear music about God, that I hear lessons about God, that I hear a sermon about God. Uh, but I want to be able to go to that God uh, myself. Uh, when I hear that God healed somebody else, uh, I want to experience healing for myself. Uh, how many remembers a time that you heard a testimony of somebody being healed and it blessed you? Amen? Or, or you read it in the Bible and you said, man, that's awesome. That's, that's a wonderful story. Uh, we read how the walls came down. Uh, we hear about how the Hebrew boys went in the fire and they were not burned. Uh, how Daniel, uh, we see these pictures in children's church of this guy just kicked back uh, on top of the lions resting there. Uh, and the lions should have devoured him, but they didn't do it. Uh, we hear about David uh, facing that giant with just a slingshot and a stone. We're thinking, wow, uh, that is wonderful. Uh, and know that as they sung tonight that David could face that giant with confidence uh, so that's blessed us right uh, but how many times have we uh, oh since then uh, had some giants in our way oh it blesses me I love to preach about David uh, but I also love to preach about uh, how there was giants to come up in my life uh, and I said the same God uh, that moved for David is the same God uh, that will move for me uh, and to be able to testify uh, not about a story I read or something that was preached to me uh, but with, oh I walked through the valley of the shadow of death. I know for a fact not just because I've got a knowledge of the word of God because I've walked through the valley of the shadow of death and I didn't have to fear evil. Why? Because just like his word said God was with me. He's been peace. He's been joy. He's been strength. So the best lessons are taught by the God Himself. So as we read and study His Word, uh, the Holy Spirit of God begins to enlighten us. Uh, the Holy Ghost begins to teach us uh, and begins to take that part uh, and begin to move. Uh, so that's the one of the responsibilities uh, of the Holy Ghost is to teach us. He said, I will uh, give you another comforter. Uh, Jesus said, I'm not leaving you here by yourself, uh, but I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost uh, and He's going to guide you into all truths. Uh, John 14 and 26, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, uh, whom the Father will send in my name, uh, he shall teach you all things uh, and bring all things to your remembrance uh, whatsoever uh, I have said unto you. Uh, what he's saying is I gave the Holy Ghost just to remind you. I'm giving you the Holy Ghost uh, to remind you of what I've already told you. I'm going to bring it back to your attention. So when he is taught by the Lord, his lips shall utter praise. Man, when God begins to, to, begins to enlighten and begins to speak and begin to teach and begin to lay things on your heart, there, there's times in just preparing messages that God's begin to speak to my heart. I have to lay down the pen, back up from the computer, and just throw my hands in the air and praise Him and thank God, whether it's in the office, whether it's in the sanctuary, whether it's on the job, wherever it is, when God begins to speak to you and and God begins to show you something. Uh, when you begin to read a scripture, maybe you've read a hundred times, uh, but it jumps off the page. Uh, and God begins to speak into your life, into a situation that you're going through and facing. Uh, and God begins to teach you something. Uh, your lips begin to utter praise unto God. That word utter means uh, to send forth, uh, to pour out. Uh, we begin to be like that woman with that alabaster box. Uh, and we just bust it open and pour it out upon him. Uh, we just lavish him in our praise. When we've heard from God, when we pray, God, give me revelation, that's a desire, that's a petition. But when revelation comes, when God opens up the heavens, I love that song that Brother George sung last week. I always love to hear him sing that, especially that talking part. When he's talking about those clouds gathered around, he said, then all of a sudden. 
when that happens, when that all of a sudden takes place, when those clouds roll out uh, and the presence of God comes into your dark situation, I, I don't know about you, but there's something linked between there and my arms. And they begin, something happens. Uh, these lips begin to proclaim, uh, thank you, Jesus. Praise your wonderful name. Uh, and begin to utter uh, and begin to pour out those praises. Uh, that indication here is that it's something uh, that cannot be contained. Uh, when God teaches you, when God speaks to you, uh, you can't hold it in. You can't keep it quiet. Uh, when God has given you revelation, uh, what's going to happen? Uh, how do you know if somebody's got their revelation or not? Because they're praising. If they're not praising, they ain't heard nothing. Amen? A people that are praising is a people that's received revelation. A revelation of Jesus Christ. I have seen the Lord. That, that's an old hymn that says, I have seen the Lord. And I know that His mercy has been revealed to me. And when that happens, you begin to praise Him. We must praise God. For what? For what He's taught me. He's taught me how to live holy in an unholy world. He's taught me of how He's brought me out of darkness into this marvelous light. And then He says in verse 172, My tongue shall speak of Thy Word. You mean you can't have a knowledge of God and keep it quiet? No. When you get a knowledge of God, when you get an understanding of God, when you begin to have that kind of encounter with God, uh, there, there's those of us who've just met people that's changed our lives. And, man, they just impacted our lives, whether it's a spouse or whether it's a friend. Uh, and they just had a, such an impact on our lives. And, and every time we get in a conversation, what are we doing? We're telling them about that person. We, we, we can't stop talking about them. Uh, or, or if something happens that impacts our lives, we can't stop talking about it. Well, that's how the psalmist says he was about the Word of God. Uh, that God has spoken to me, and, and my tongue shall speak of thy word, he says, uh, for all thy commandments are righteousness. Uh, unfortunately, most of the words that come out of our mouths are ours. They're our opinions. They're our faults. You know, I had a great idea. How many, there, how many has ever had somebody tell you, I got a great idea, and it wasn't a great idea? <laughs> Amen. I, 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 man, let me just tell you how I feel about that. And you wish they had just kept it to themselves. Unfortunately, that's what happens with a lot of us. Often what comes out is prideful and destructive and disrespectful. We talked about that this morning before we're saved. It's not always cuss words. It's just about tone. It's about... Uh, the way that we treat people and the way that we talk uh, comes across as prideful, as tearing others down, uh, disrespecting others. Uh, James reminds us of the power of our tongue. We need to remember this. There's power in the tongue. In James chapter 3, verse 6, he says, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members. That is, defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. That's in your mouth, right there. The tongue. That's the potential of the tongue, if it's not sanctified. That's the potential of the tongue. That's why I believe that the initial evidence of being filled with the Holy Ghost is you begin to speak with other tongues, new tongues, uh, as the Spirit gives the others. Why is that? Uh, because Scripture tells us the tongue is the most unruly member of the body. I was preaching one Sunday morning, and I said, uh, this morning we're going to turn a member out. I got some looks like you just gave me. And they were looking at me with big eyes. I said, we're going to turn out that unruly member called the tongue. We're going to deal with an unruly member called the tongue. And James is telling us there that that tongue uh, is there and that tongue uh, will be, bring destruction. That tongue will cause you the most problems. Uh, it will be, begin to say things uh, that shouldn't be said. Uh, that's why we need to be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost uh, and begin to speak with new tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. Uh, and it's not always, uh, maybe not always speaking in other tongues. Uh, it's just not speaking until the Spirit of God says speak. If God's not telling you to speak, be a mute. Amen. That's why he's given us one mouth and two ears. We need to hear more than we talk. We need to hear from God. And 
by all means, don't say, thus saith the Lord, if you had not heard anything from the Lord. Do not begin to try to be a, a prophet. If, if God has not spoke uh, and God has not said many times, that thus saith the Lord is, let me give you my opinion on it. And people don't need your opinion on it. They don't need my opinion on it. They need to hear from God. They need revelation. And before we go trying to give people instruction, uh, we need to make sure that we've got revelation, that we've heard from God. Uh, so the psalmist here promised uh, to speak the word of God. Uh, are you ready to make that promise tonight, Middleburg Church of God? Uh, are you willing to ready to make that promise tonight? I only want to speak uh, the word of God. Uh, I only want to speak what God says speak. Uh, because when we speak what God says speak, uh, we're building up, not tearing down. When we speak what God says speak, we're speaking life in the situation, not death in the situation. That does not mean there will not come judgment. That does not mean that there will not come critique. But there is no condemnation in it because God does not speak condemnation. But God does speak reproof to make us better in the Christian walk and to understand I am not going to be critical of someone. I am not going to correct someone just so I can say I straighten them out but I want to be sensitive to the spirit of God the toughest thing to do is to correct someone else it is for me some people enjoy it Amy loves lining me out but it's tough to come to somebody in love and say that's wrong you can't do that you can't profess the life of a Christian and do that and, and we may see it with our eyes, but we better not say a word with our mouth until we've heard from God. There, there's been times that people's wanted me to respond through things. They're thinking, Pastor, can you not see that? Oh, I see it. I see it. But I've got to be sensitive to God because I could put my mouth on it and come as the authority of the head of the pastor and try to make a correction in something and mess it all up. So even as a pastor, if God does not give me the words to say, I'm not going to say it because I don't want to say the wrong words. And that's what the psalmist is saying here. He says, I promise to speak the word of God. I want to be sure I'm speaking the word of God. And the only way that you can be sure that you're speaking the word of God is to be in the presence of God, to talk to God, be, to be praying to God and asking for direction from God. In order to do that, we must first get the word of God in our lives. We can't speak the Word of God uh, just because we prayed about it. Uh, but the only way we can speak the Word of God is if we study the Word of God uh, and we know the Word of God. We've said it a million times uh, that the only way that Jesus, when He was tempted there by Satan in the wilderness, could say it is written uh, because He knew it was written. Uh, many can't say it is written because they don't know what is written because they've never read it. They've never studied it. They've heard it preached on a Sunday morning, uh, and they've said, I don't agree with that, but they've never studied it for themselves to know if it's true or not. Uh, it just didn't line up with what their flesh wanted to do, uh, so they cross their arms, they stick that lip out, they get mad uh, and say, I don't believe it that way. Uh, but they haven't spent any time with God, uh, but the one who has spent time with God uh, is God's trying to speak to them through that person uh, to help them to get their life in align with the Word of God, uh, that they can live holy in an unholy world, uh, but they refuse refuse to read it and more than refuse to read it they refuse to heed it but we must read it we must meditate upon it we must have it as a frontless before our eyes it must become our everything Jesus reminds us that we are defiled not by what goes in the mouth but what comes out Mark 7 and 15 says there is nothing from without a man that entereth into him that can defile him but the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. So it's corrupt communication that will begin to come out. The third thing, after praise, lining himself in praise, he said, I need some provisions. He desired provisions. He desired for provisions from God in verse 173. He said, Lord, help me. Anybody ever been there? When you say, Lord, help me, that's, that's a simple way of saying, Lord, I need some provision. I desire some provisions. Or you can just say, help! You can come before God and, and try to be diplomatic and come before Him dignified and say, Lord, 
I need some provisions. I desire some provisions of you. Or you can just be Clay, here, Clay County country and say, Lord, I need some help. And that's what the psalmist said. He said, let thine hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. So the basis for his appeal here is that the psalmist had made a choice. He had made a choice. And I, I hope his choice is the same, our choice is the same as his. His choice was the precepts of God. Understand something tonight, church. Once again, we're chosen by God. Handpicked by God. And so he, he's already chose us. But there's also a choice that each one of us have to make. We must decide uh, what or who will govern our lives. Uh, and the psalmist said, I've chose uh, the precepts of God. Uh, he said that I am going to determine what governs my life. It's right here. The Word of God. Time spent in prayer. I'm not making a decision without praying about it. I'm not making a decision until I look to the Word of God about it. So the psalmist here said, I've got some provisions that are desired, and I know that my provisions, that my God shall supply all of my need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So I'm looking to Jesus, who is the author and the what? The finisher of my faith. Begin Meaning that He that began this good work in me is able to continue it, uh, and is able to complete it. Uh, I'm all in. Uh, he said, I'm submitted to the Word of God. I've made a choice, uh, and my choice is the precepts of the Word of God. Uh, my choice is the Word of God. Uh, my choice is to know that God chose me, uh, and I choose Him. Uh, and that's how I will govern every decision of my life. Uh, and the psalmist chose the precepts of God. Uh, he chose God's Word. How about us? I choose God's Word. Then he said in verse 174, Lord, save me. Save me. I have longed for thy salvation, O Lord, and thy law is my delight. The salvation that the psalmist is speaking of here uh, was that uh, was not of a present tense, uh, but he was talking about the future tense of salvation. Uh, he was talking about that at that moment of salvation, we're saved uh, at that, that, that penalty of sin. That's not what he's talking about. Uh, he's not talking about. We talked about this in our Sunday school class. Uh, that salvation starts right there. That's where we turn the page. That's where we're born again. But he's looking beyond that as we walk with him every day, uh, as we're saved uh, from the power of sin, uh, how God moves in our lives daily. Uh, and we don't neglect this great salvation, but we cultivate this great salvation. Uh, and we live in it, and we walk in it, uh, and we abide in it, and we abound in it. Uh, he said, I'm making the Word uh, my daily walk. Uh, and to understand if we do that one day in heaven, uh, we will be saved uh, from the very presence of sin. Uh, Listen, we've got salvation here. We've got salvation at the altar, and we walk in sanctification, but there's pitfalls all around us. Sin is everywhere. I've told my Sunday school class that. Everywhere I go, there's sin. Went to Disney, there's sin. Go to Walmart, there's sin. I, I told my class a couple weeks ago, I said, I've seen just as many homosexuals in the church as I did at Disney. Because sin is is everywhere, even within the church. Sin is present within our lives. It tries to sneak into our conversations. Uh, it tries to sneak into our decisions. Uh, and that's why we need to be governed by the Word of God. Uh, but to understand something, uh, there's coming a place, there'll be no more sin. There'll be no more sinful decisions and sinful ways. There'll be no more gossip. There'll be none of those uh, things of this world uh, that, will, that we can get entangled in. There'll be no more traps of Satan. I long for that day uh, as we delight in God's Word, uh, as we long for that complete salvation. Uh, we long for our glorified bodies. Amen. Uh, there'll be no pain. There'll be no suffering. There'll be no struggle. Uh, someone wrote the song, Heaven's Sounding Sweeter, and it's sounding real sweet right about now. Amen. Uh, no that it's coming. There's coming a day when our salvation will be fulfilled. There's coming a day that we're going to walk. He said, those that endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Our salvation will be complete. And the psalmist said, that's what I'm longing for. And finally, 
He sought for protection. He says here in verse 175, seeking strength, let my soul live and it shall praise thee and let my judgments, let thy judgments help me. You know what? He had a great awareness. He was very aware of his need for life. We need to be aware of the same thing. Life comes from God and God alone. Amen. Life comes from God and God alone. He also acknowledges that God's word is that which will help and strengthen him. So as long as we live, our lives should be praising the Lord. We sing it, right? Let me live, blessed Lord, in the light of thy word. We, we sing all of the songs. And we go through all of the routine. We say a lot with lip service. A lot comes from here. We get moved. And we say a lot. We profess a lot. We proclaim a lot. But we need to be living a lifestyle, as I said this morning, a lifestyle of holiness, a lifestyle of praise. Word, one man said it this way, preach the gospel and use words when necessary. That testimony for Nathan was not his testimony, but somebody else's testimony of him. He said, I should have known. Why? Because the way you carry yourself. They should have known. They know. Nathan didn't wear a t-shirt to work, says, I'm saved. Just the way he walked in, the way he presented himself. The way that we present ourselves should let others know they're saved. They've been born again. So he was acknowledging that God's word will help and strengthen him. As long as we live, our lives should praise God. But we cannot understand this, and don't think that you can. We cannot survive without his word to help us. If you think for a moment that you can make it without God's word, you're sadly mistaken. How do you know that? Because I've tried it, and I don't recommend it. I've tried it, and I don't recommend it. I don't need this. Tried to close it up, put it on a shelf. I'll do it my way. I'll live how I want to live. How'd that work out for you? Not good. Did not work out good at all. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Amen. That's why I come running back. Like that prodigal son, I came back down that road and said, even the hired servants of my father's house have bread enough to spare. And here I was perishing with hunger. That prodigal son said, Lord, just put me out there in the servant's house. It would be better than where I'm at because my decision was wrong. I can't live without your word. I can't live without the governing of the Spirit of God. I, I am apt to fail. Amen. I need the leading of the Spirit of God. I don't know about you, but... I have to get up every day and say, Lord, direct my paths. If not, I'll mess it up. I'll say something stupid. I'll do something wrong. I'll make a wrong turn. I'll make a wrong decision. I want to be governed by the Word of God. I want to be led by the Spirit of God. That should be the desire. We cannot survive without His Word. That's why I get up every day, every day, and I get the Word of God in me. I love my, my devotion. I, I don't always, I'll be honest with you, I don't lo always love every devotion of our daily bread. It's kind of not been as good as it used to be, in my opinion. Uh, but there's some good devotions, and I, I love getting that daily devotion. And I love beginning to get the Word of God in me, uh, whether I'm reading it or whether I'm listening to it. Uh, when I'm driving down the road, I'm listening to the Word of God. Uh, I'm reading the Word of God. I'm studying the Word of God. And it's all, not always to prepare a message. Teachers don't just study to prepare a message. Preachers don't just study just to prepare a message. Teachers a lesson and ministers a message. But we need to have a personal time in the Word of God. I was telling my class this morning that if we're not careful, we'll be so busy trying to make sure everybody else is equipped, and we're unequipped. And we're, we're trying to make sure everybody else is full but we're empty. And that's destruction. He says, I long for the Word of God. I can't survive without the Word of God. Then he says that, verse 176, just seeking God's tender care. He said, I've gone astray like a lost sheep. Me too. 
Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. What was he saying? Jesus said to us, I am the good shepherd. And you begin to study the shepherd, you understand the shepherd is very interested in his sheep. So much that he tells us that he'd leave the 90 and 9 to find the one that has gone astray. So we need that tender and loving care of our shepherd. Songwriter put it this way, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. That's us. We're prone to wander. We're prone to go astray. We're prone to get off course. Paul quoted my dad before church tonight, just in the words of my dad, sheep are dumb. (laughs) Remember him saying that at Pastor Appreciation? Sheep are dumb. I'm one of those dumb sheep. I'm prone to wander. I need the shepherd. I need his rod and his staff to comfort me, to guide me and direct me. We find ourselves separated from the flock, having wandered away. We need to remember the Word of God because the Word of God is going to begin to deal with us on how to get his attention. Remember that we have a shepherd who loves us and will seek us until he finds us and he restore us to the fold. So when we begin to wander away and we begin to get out there, There's always a way back. There's always a way back. The shepherd is always looking for you. The prodigal son, his father, I believe every day was looking down that road. He was looking for him. He was looking for him. And there is a shepherd, a great shepherd. Though we may be prone to wander, I need the word of God. So in closing tonight, if Sister Gilda come and help me, I want to ask you a question tonight. Where are you tonight? Well, that's a silly question. I'm sitting here on this pew, Pastor. But where are we tonight? Have we wandered from the God we love, the one that we've testified about, the one that we've sung about, one that we may have preached about or taught about? Where are you tonight? Have you wandered away from that God that you love, that you know loves you, if that's you tonight, I just simply want to tell you, come home. Why? Because He's seeking for us this evening. He wants us to come back. Maybe uh, we've wandered away from the Word of God. Maybe you had not got too far gone, you just had not read it this week. You just had not studied it this week. You haven't gone out there and kicked the door in and blown it out both ends and just partied it up out in this world you haven't gone deep into the things of sin but you've laid the word of God down you know what the spirit of the Lord is saying to you tonight come on home come on home what about you tonight have you wandered away from his love he's seeking for you tonight come back to his word find the provision and the protection that is right there in God's word And it's very simple. All you have to do is offer up that prayer of surrenderance to God. And offer up a praise that is due unto Him. You can come before God with an honest heart and say, God, I've missed the mark. That's what sin is, missing the mark. Lord, I've come up short. Lord, I know you love me. And God, I love you. But I sure haven't been acting like it. I've wandered away from your precepts. I've wandered away from your word. But I want to come back to a heart of worship. I want to come back to where my life is not all about me, but it's all about the Word. This is the psalmist's final plea in Psalms 119, the longest chapter in the Bible, and he uses this final stanza of this uh, to make a final plea for us uh, to fall in love. Uh, He's talking about the Word. Man, we've talked about the Word in 21 stanzas. Every direction we've talked about the Word of God. Uh, And he said, I got one final plea uh, for you, and that's to fall in love with God's Word, uh, to love God's Word, to trust God's Word, uh, and to obey God's Word. Uh, But we We can preach it. We can teach it. We can share it. We can have a knowledge of it. The question is, where are you at tonight? Only you can answer that question. If you've wandered away, my plea to you is with the psalmist, come home. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, old sinner, come home. It does not mean that we're out in open sin. 
There may have been those of us who've got cold or indifferent or didn't see it important, the importance of reading God's Word every day. I didn't think it was very important to pray every day. I'm one of them CEO Christians, Christian Christmas and Easter only. Because I don't see the importance of getting all fanatical about it. But God's saying, you need to fall in love with my word. Because it's the compass that's going to get you through this life. Because the end without the word is destruction. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God... Through His Word is eternal life. So where are you at tonight? And as you stand with me, you can only, only you can answer that question. Maybe you need to ask yourself that question. Where are you? You ever had to just have a conversation with yourself? I talk to myself sometimes, and yes, sometimes I even answer myself. Where are you at? What are you doing? What was you thinking? Ever been there? You need to begin to ask yourself some of those questions tonight. Say, where are you at? Why have you wandered away from God? I love that song. I believe Sister Rhonda, might have been Sister Diane, sung it a few weeks ago. Don't let me stay here very long, Lord. Understanding that I've wandered away, but I can't stay there very long. I've got to get back right. I've got to get back in alignment with your word. If the Spirit of God is dealing with you tonight, I want you to come to this altar. If you just want to make sure, I want you to come to this altar. Or if you just want to take some time to praise Him for His Word, I want you to come to this altar. You know who that leaves out? Nobody. We need to come to this altar tonight and spend some time with Him. Father, we come tonight desiring more of Your Word in our lives. Seeking to be conformed in the likeness and the image of the Word of God found upon that potter's wheel, molded in accordance to your will and your way. Touch hearts tonight as we humble ourselves in prayer around the altar this evening. So desperately needing you, so desperately needing your word, so desperately needing your will in our lives. Touch us tonight. We ask it in Jesus' name.